One of the common issues I hear people say when I do disability exams is that they drop things. And that can be a real dilemma because the fact is everybody drops things. Does this person have a particularly disabling problem causing them to drop things or are they normal? When I explain to them that most people do drop things, they inevitably say that there's something special about them dropping. But when I ask exactly what's wrong, they often can't express it. So in this video, I'm going to talk about dropping things. When is it an indication of disability or when is it simply normal? Hello, I'm John Foster. I'm a medical doctor who does social security disability exams. And as usual, everything I say reflects my own opinions based on my own experience and study and not the opinions of the Social Security Administration or any other medical body. Now, there are basically five reasons why a person will drop things, will have difficulty with what Social Security calls gripping and manipulating objects. The first is loss of feeling. If you can't feel your hand or feel what you're holding, it's very difficult to hold on to it. The second is weakness. If the muscles that control your thumb and fingers are weak, you'll tend to drop things. The third is clumsiness. I often see people who have normal strength but lack the coordination to use their hand normally. The fourth is pain, and this is usually due to some form of arthritis. It's difficult to get a good grip on something if your hand is hurting. And then the fifth is deformities, either deformities of the hand that the person was born with, or deformities that developed due to disease and injury. So first, I'm going to talk about loss of feeling or hand numbness. And the number one reason I see people with hand numbness is due to carpal tunnel syndrome. The carpal tunnel is a space here in your wrist that a nerve called the median nerve passes through. And in carpal tunnel syndrome, it gets pinched in that space. When that happens, there will be numbness of the thumb, index, middle, and this half of the ring finger. The other half of the ring finger and the little finger will feel normally. Now, that's what they say in medical textbooks. And I used to be bemused when people with carpal tunnel syndrome would tell me that their whole hand was numb. And then I developed mild carpal tunnel syndrome myself. And I noticed that it did feel like my whole hand was numb. However, if I carefully tested each side of each finger, I would notice that I could feel the little finger and this half of the ring finger normally. Carpal tunnel syndrome is graded mild, moderate, and severe. In mild carpal tunnel syndrome, there's intermittent numbness, usually when the person wakes up from sleep. In moderate carpal tunnel syndrome, there's numbness all throughout the day and night. And in severe carpal tunnel syndrome, these muscles called the thenar eminence which are innervated by the median nerve become weak and you'll see that these muscles will shrink and the person will have a great deal of difficulty pinching their thumb and little finger together tightly. Often they can't even get them all the way together. Another common cause of hand numbness is cubital tunnel syndrome. And in this case, the ulnar nerve, the nerve that supplies the feeling to the little, and this half of the ring finger gets pinched, usually in the elbow. There are other causes of hand numbness. 
Some people with strokes get numbness on one side of their body, and it's usually maximum in the arm and hand. The nerves that control the hand's feeling and strength begin in the brain, run down the spinal cord, and then come out little holes in the cervical spine called neural foramina, clump together in the armpit, and then run all the way down to the fingertips. So problems with the neck, such as herniated discs in the neck, can cause partial numbness of one or both hands. Another common cause of hand numbness is neuropathy, such as diabetic neuropathy. In neuropathy, the entire hand, on, usually on both sides and both feet, will become numb. So that, those are the common causes of hand numbness. And if you're finding this helpful, you may want to subscribe. I generally put out one disability-related video a week. The second thing that can cause difficulty with holding and manipulating and dropping things is weakness. And this is common in stroke. There can be anything from mild weakness on one side of the body to complete paralysis where the person cannot move their arm and hand at all. I already mentioned severe carpal tunnel syndrome can cause problems with thumb movement and also severe pinched nerves coming out of the neck can cause weakness in one or both hands. The next issue that can cause people to drop things is lack of coordination. I see this fairly commonly in stroke patients. They may have normal grip strength. They can squeeze tight, but they just can't coordinate the movement of their hands and fingers. A test I like to do is to have the patient touch each finger of both hands as quickly as possible. And in a stroke patient, you may see normal speed on one side and great difficulty getting the other side to coordinate, even if gross strength is normal. Patients with cerebral palsy who have muscle spasticity, their muscles are tight and in spasm and difficult to control, will have trouble controlling their hands. People with a tremor, such as people with benign essential tremor, and sometimes Parkinson's disease, will have trouble holding things. After all, it's hard to pick up something and grab it if your hand is going like that. The next reason for dropping things and having difficulty with hand use is pain. And this is usually due to some form of arthritis. It could be osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, gout, or psoriatic arthritis. What will happen is that when the person tries to squeeze or pinch their fingers, they'll get severe pain and they just can't grab hold or move their fingers the way they want to. Also, in many cases of arthritis, the finger joints may become stiff and difficult to move. A common disabling form of arthritis is what's called trapeziometacarpal arthritis. That's arthritis in this joint at the base of the thumb. And just to let you know, in medicine we don't number the fingers because it always leads to confusion. Is the thumb the first finger or is the index the first finger? We always name the fingers, thumb, index, middle, ring, little. The fifth cause is deformities, problems with the way the hand is shaped. For example, I saw one person who was born with very short forearms 
and they only had three straight fingers. They had no thumb on either side, and that causes a great deal of difficulty with gripping and manipulating. Also, their forearms were so short that they couldn't reach the top of their head to brush their hair, for example. A common acquired deformity, something that occurs later than life, is Dupuytren's contracture. And this is usually in men, and it's a thickening of the tissue in the palm of the hand that causes the fingers to become contracted where they can't straighten out all the way. Another common thing that I see is old trauma that didn't heal up well. For example, a finger that was broken and healed up crooked, or an old laceration that cut one of the tendons that moves the finger and the tendon wasn't repaired and now the finger either can't straighten out all the way or can't bend all the way. So the bottom line is if you have problems using your hands that is very significant for Social Security but you must be more specific than merely saying that you drop things. You need to give the reason or reasons there may be several together, such as pain and numbness and weakness, to explain to the examining doctor why you have difficulty using your hands. Well, I hope this has been helpful, and as always, remember, if it happens, it's possible.